you, you're pretty confident that if you're ready March 6th and the winner of Figueredo and Moreno is ready March 6th, that that's, that's the fight? Yeah, for sure. That's the fight. You know, we spoke with Mick, Sean, Hunter, Dana, Ali. Um, that's, 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 the, uh, that's the game plan, you know. When I reach out to them about going to 25, we've been, we talked about going to 25 for, for quite some time. You know, um, you do it, do it now while I can. Um, I have a great nutrition. You know, I have trifecta, I have orgain. I have a lot of, you know, things that I can do this right. I don't even cut weight for right now. I'm 143 pounds. You know, and uh, I don't cut weight to 35. I just kind of watch fight week. 25. You know, obviously it'll be a little bit of a dieting, and but that's what everyone does. I mean, at this level, you have to, you know. A lot of these 35 pounders, they're, they're weighing above 160. It's hard for me to get above 150, you know, to be honest. Like, I have to be like, do zero cardio, just lift a bunch of weights. Um, so, yeah, I think 25 is a really good weight for me. You know, like I said, Davidson cuts way more weight than I do. He walks around heavier than I do. He has a harder time with that weight class. A lot of these 25 pounders do, you know. Um, and it, it just finds me, you know, when, when one fighter wants to come down a weight class but not really, you know, I don't even cut weights for 35. So yeah, I'm excited. March 6th, hopefully, Lord willing that I'll be, you know, clear of COVID, clear of this virus. Hopefully a lot of people in this world will, um, you know, be better off as well from it. Hopefully the world starts opening up this COVID, this, you know, this COVID goes away. It's been, been, been a crazy, uh, crazy year for sure. And what did you think about Figueroa's performance? I mean, I spoke to you a little bit on the phone that night and uh, you, you just made it sound like, uh, well, that's what he was supposed to do to a guy like Alex yeah. Perez. I was impressed by him, man. I got to say, and I think a, a lot of people were impressed by him. I mean, just that ability to snatch a, a, a finish that quickly. Um, and like you said, he comes in, he looks physically imposing, but as a guy who, you know, is, is, is thinking about fighting him, like, what did you see on Saturday? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Like I said, that's what he's supposed to do against those kind of adversaries. You know, you bring in Alex Perez, who, you know, wasn't really well known. The kid has 20 some fights, you know, over 20 some professional fights. You know, I feel like he he wasn't prepared for that shot. He wasn't prepared for um, being in there. I felt like he was happy with being there. And I was like, hey, I, I got this opportunity. I'm gonna go in there and I feel like he down his leg for sure. You know what I mean? The number one thing when someone's around your neck, what do you do? You fight the hands. He's a wrestler, you know. You should have known to fight the hands. And Figueroa is uh, is good with jujitsu, good with guillotines. But I come from a camp that I've never been submitted. You know, I'm. I think my jujitsu skills are far more superior um, in a lot of ways. I just don't have to use them. You know, what I mean, if, if if the fight presents where it has to go to the ground. Let's go. You know, I'm. I come from Ohio. I wrestle. This dude can't take me down. You know what I mean? He can't. He can't take me down. He can't outstrike me. He's flat-footed. These guys sit there in front of him. You know, understand? He sit there in front of him. That's when he bombs on him. I move too much. I'm too quick in and out. A lot of these fighters too. They don't know how to fight going backwards. They're only pressure fighters. You see, when Alex was doing good, he did one kick, two kick. You know, boom. You know, it was good. Then he was like. Oh, and they're watching his work. A lot of these fighters do that. A lot of these fighters don't know how to fight going. They only go, go fight forward, you know, going backward, side to side, his movement. And then it's going to be like, it's going to be a, um, my my game plan or thoughts on the fight. And since it's been announced, since it's been kind of just resonating in my mind, it's going to be like um, my game plan or how I look at it is how, how I fought Dominic Cruz. Now he is no Dominic Cruz. You understand? Mm -hmm. He is flat-footed. Dominic moves a lot. He's very unorthodox. Throws punches and kicks at weird-ass angles. So you always have to be up. And I've corrected a lot of my stuff. I, I've, you know, I had to learn the hard way. Um, that's just my whole life. But learning the hard way is, is, is has formed me into who I am and where, where I'm at now. So I went past that. A lot of, you know, I'm not emotional in there. Um, I know it's business at the end of the day. And uh, this is what puts food on my you know family's table mm -hmm. and i know i'll go in there i'm just excited to fight him let him keep let him keep winning let him keep building up this he's the unstoppable force he's just just because you he, everybody must have forgot what, I, what i've done so you know what my, like muhammad ali said that he, he was 
only great. He wished that he thought he was greater. You know what I mean? He wants to show you how great he is. His only thing that he's, his setback was that he didn't know how great he was truly. I truly know how great I am because I had the passion for the sport, the hunger for the sport. I was at the top of the sport. I beat one of the best to ever do it in a dynamic fashion. No one's ever done it. And I plunged all the way down to rock bottom where a lot of people would give up and, you know, feed into the demons of doubt. And, you know, I've been there. I, I, a lot of these guys that are coming up and fighting this guy, they're just happy. Like, oh, I got a title shot. No, I, I long for that gold belt. I long for that world championship because I know how powerful it is to have it. For me to say that I accomplished being a, a two-time world champion, two-weight world champion, um, that's what that's what's, that's what I want to put in. I want to put everything into it. You know, I think that's what gets me going. And then I'll go up to 135 and fight whoever, whatever that whole mix up is, you know, um, whatever's going on there with, with Jan and Sterling. And, you know, you got some good fights, but I, I feel like I can compete at both weight classes, you know, <laughs> obviously, you know, yeah. um, I, I'm just excited for the future. Obviously get healthy first, see how this fight with uh, Davison and, and Brandon, resume i feel like he's going to run over that kid i he's he's that's another lamb being brought into the slaughterhouse and that's and that's fine like i said let him build that hype up let him build up like holy this kid is the real deal until you bring a real deal into the fight there's, not, there's gonna be no backing down with me you know there's not there's gonna, it's gonna i'm excited for the fight it's gonna be um i feel like he's uh he's the bull and i'm the matador but when I want to be the bull, I can be the bull. You know, he can't be the matador. He can't be the matador with me. You know, understand? He's he's too flat-footed. He stands here like this. You have your hands low on me. I'm gonna tune you up. You know, I'm gonna give you that Jorge Masvidal. You, know, you know, that two piece in a soda. Yeah, that three piece in a soda. Yeah, I have a two piece dance off. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for it, man. Like um, even just being able to speak to you getting my uh, heart rate going, just, uh, you know, talking about flying. I didn't have that. I didn't have that years ago. Um, I, I had to just kind of redevelop myself, kind of just get, you know, I think those losses um, did a lot to me, a lot of good to me. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, man, he, he doesn't have it anymore. He's this, he's that. Um, it actually, I think if I would have went out and defended my title three or four times and, I don't think that I would be where I'm at right now. I don't think I would um, have the, the love for it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to love this so much that you hate it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was at. And that's where I still am at. You know, you asked me two days, two days from now, like, Hey, how do you love fighting? I might not love it, but you know, it's, it's one of those things. This is, this is what I was meant to do. I, this is, I was born and I was bred to do this. You know, it comes, this is in my blood. This is all I've known my whole entire life. And, you know, once you try to pull yourself away from that fire, it's, it's, it's hard. Once you're in, you're in, you know, and, and I'm all in. I think that you just learn, learn uh, lessons around the way, just in life. So like I said, I'm, 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 from, I'm grateful for those because I wouldn't have to fix anything. You know, I had to fix my, my, my control in there. Uh, my emotions and again and emotions stem from more than just inside the octagon you know outside how I how I um, embrace my day my life um, how I look at life and my, and my son helped out a lot um, you know I would say trying to become a better person you know and it's that's that's a daily struggle as well um, but you know I, I feel like these next few fights, next few years of my career will be my best ones. And I'm just excited to get back in there healthy first. COVID has, COVID's been, but, uh, you know, I feel like we're finally getting on the ending of it. So I get back in the training. I, I miss that, man. That's what I miss. I miss, I miss just being in there and grinding. That's, that's how we pay. That's rent. Rent's due every day. Yep. Yep. Well, I'll leave you with this. Um, I mean, you, you were getting me hyped up just talking about the Figueredo fight. I love that fight. I think it's a, it's a spectacular fight and, and you're right. I mean, he's, his stock is, is going up like exponentially every time and like, good for him. He deserves it. Um, you mentioned that he did go and train at team alpha male there for a little bit. I mean, is there, is there anything to that? Is there like, is there anything to expand on there? Like, did you guys cross paths? Did you ever roll together? Did you spar together? Was there any like interaction between you two while he was there? 
Uh, he came up and wanted a picture because he was a fan. But uh, no, he's a he, he's a good kid. I mean, he's not a kid. He's he's actually older than me. He's a good dude. Um, actually, no, I had a torn. I tore my whole. Uh, what the hell was that? I tore <laughs> tore the tendon off my bone and my and my um, my thumb. So I, I was when he was there. I think he fought. I forget who he fought. He did, did two camps with us, and um, you know I, I didn't I didn't cross paths with them. Some of my training partners have. Um, I just know what I bring to the table, what he brings to the table. You know, I understand. He's never been five rounds. I've been five rounds. He's still unproven. You know, anyone go in there and look good against uh, Alex Perez. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do that. I, I prove I, I prove myself time and time again, um, you know, at the biggest stage. So I feel like, you know, like we spoke, look, keep building that hype, keep building that hype, because that's what you know. UFC, that's good, man. That's the division needs that. You got a finisher in him. He goes out and finishes. He gets the job done. But uh, so do I. I'm a finisher. I think it's going to be a great fight. He's going to bring out the best in me, um, and I feel like I'll bring out the best in him. I just feel like I'm the far superior fighter. I have a bigger fight IQ. I've learned from my mistakes. He's only had one loss. I've had three um, at the top. And I, you know, I, there's just variables. I've been five rounds. I've been five rounds with one of the best person, you know, fighters in the, in the world to do it. Um, I've been in those big grudge matches. I've been in those hyped up fights, you know, and I know how to control my emotions better i feel like once he's actually in there with me he sees the speed he sees the movements he sees not only that but he feels the power then he's going to come in and just what he does he just tries to come full, full you know plant the feet and duck and chuck and i've been there before i i understand that um you know that's 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 his style but i have so much more to give so much more to do inside there me and coach mark henry have been uh just you know Fixing the small things, man. Just it, you know. Just, no, just we've only seen we've only seen one fight with you after a camp with Mark, right? It's only been yeah. one. Right? One, yeah. We talk daily. I mean, we talk a lot. Me and Coach Mark. Uh, I feel like he's helped me out more than just being an athlete or being a fighter. Um, he brings so much uh, diversity um, into the fight game. My life, personal life, my 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 religious views. Um, my spiritual views, I should say. Um, I'm not really religious, I'm a more spiritual person, but he's just a great guy to be around. You know, he'll call you up and just like, hey, what do you think on this? And he's got some other fighters in fight camps. He's like, hey, you know, so he values my opinion on, on things as well. But just I never met a person that's just so, um, I just obsessed with the sport. I mean, I have a lot of guys out here and a lot of my coaches are as well. But there's just something different about Coach Mark that yeah. I like to have. I like his energy to be around. Yeah. Um, I'm missing out being with him. A lot of the guys, a lot of the Russian guys are up there in camp. Frankie's in camp. You know, Frankie's a great guy to be around too. Um, so I'm just fortunate enough that I'm able to, you know, work with Coach Mark, come back to Cali. Um, that was a good move for me, a great move for me. Uh, we was able to last camp. I wasn't able to go to Jersey. I did the camp with with Rafael. Um, you know, in Jersey until I got the co to the, I got the kidney infection and it, can't, it got postponed. COVID happened in June. So I would just film my sparring, film my pad work. Um, we would go over stuff. We would, we would, we would communicate back and forth um, throughout the weeks, a couple of times a week on, on sparring and, and stuff. And that's how we, that's how he coached me, you know, through a cell phone, yeah. you know, the virtual. Um, so it's great. You know, it's great. They came out fight week. We did our codes when, and we, and we got to win. So uh, I, I have that, you know, I, I feel like um, coaches are always looking forward, uh, you know, dissecting the opponents, little things, like little things I don't might not even see. Um, so I feel like my fight IQ is even growing and growing more immensely because of coach Henry and what he sees and what he brings to the table. This guy has been in so many world championship fights. I mean, he's been with Frankie since, you know, for 15 years, Frankie's been at the top of the top in yeah. what, three different divisions. Yeah. Um, so this guy, he's uh, he's my um, he, he's my guy to get this done. He's my guy that I trust in to get me back to the top, you know, to guide me there. All my coaches are Chris Holdsworth, Danny Castillo, 
Michael Mallott, Coach Mark, Coach Ricardo, Almeida, um, all these guys. And I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful that I can be around so many of those guys and pick from them. And, and they, they, they trust in me to devote their time away from their family, their loved ones, mm-hmm. to give me the best ability to go on there and, and, and reach my goals and dreams and aspirations. So uh, it's great, man. I'm just excited to get back in there. And then and March 6th, Figgy, old Lemonhead's going to get the one too. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a lot to look forward to, man. Your debut at 125, just your second fight with Coach Mark. And I know you're still doing the stuff at Team Alpha Male, but the second time we actually get to see what you've been working on yeah. with Mark and uh, just your health, man. I mean, if you, if you can get healthy, all three of those yeah. things combining on March 6th, that would be uh, that would be fun to watch. So we'll let you go, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for, for the time. Um, and uh, like, I'll, I'll give you a phone call on uh, UFC 256, and, and we'll see if you're right about uh, Figueredo remaining the champ and we'll see if, if whatever he does that night impresses you. Yeah, I hope so. I hope he keeps impressing me because uh, that's, that's, that's my main event. That's yep. my title to take. And that's where I want to take it from. Yep. Like I said, dude, the throne of King, you got to send in the savage like 2016, you know, this one's yep. back. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.